Hello and welcome to Citizens Forum. We're recording on Monday, December 3rd, 2018. And I'd like to thank the volunteers and the Shaw staff for helping us put this production together every other week. Today my guest is Rochelle Hill. And she is a facilitator for a healing modality known as Family Constellations. And I started participating in Family Constellations when I first moved uh, into Victoria, I, when I first started coming to Victoria, before I had actually even started to uh, make the decision that I was going to live here. And I met a, a woman named Jan Hull, and she facilitates family constellations, and my wife and I started going to them to resolve some of the questions and problems that we had in our, in our lives, in our relationships. And we really liked these, uh, this modality because it seems to work very quickly and it seems to address root or ca root causes ra and family issues rather than just something that's superficial. So I'd like to introduce Rochelle Hill, and she's a facilitator right here in Victoria, and she trained with Jan, and she's uh, going to tell us how she got involved and also just the, the story of family, con the basic story of family constellations. So welcome to the show, Rochelle. Thank you for coming in on such short notice. Great. Thank you for inviting me. It's lovely. So could you, do you want to tell us uh, a little bit about how you got involved with Family Constellations? Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, it's about six years ago, I went up island to witness the circle of one of Jan, my teacher, uh, her circles up in Nanaimo. And it was there uh, that I was blown away by this work. Um, the healing that I witnessed and participated in in that circle was um, something I've never experienced before. And so on my way back after that experience, I knew I wanted to get involved in this work. And so that when the opportunity came to do training with Jan, I jumped on it. And unbeknownst to me, I'm now actively facilitating circles and doing one-on-one -on -one work with this modality. So you've been doing it for a couple of years now? Yeah, a couple of years, and I've continued doing some advanced training with different facilitators as well. Um, some, uh, we've done nature constellations and mm. different types of uh, organizational constellations. So it's not limited to just family systemic constellations. There's, um, there's so much more reach that you can do in this field. Oh, I didn't even know about that. So tell us a little yeah. bit about how what is the history of family constellations? Because the first thing you think of when you hear a constellation is usually the stars, right? Yes, so exactly. what does that, tell us about what that means. Okay, so it's not the first definition in the dictionary. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, constellations has to do with the relation between things or people. So wherever there's a relationship that exists, we can do a constellation on. So if we start on an individual basis, you can do a constellation on one-on-one -on -one or parts of yourself. So you, and then it can extend out to relationships and, and, and into families or systems. So where it originally found, the founder of it is Bert Hellinger. He's a German psychotherapist and originally he fled from Germany as a young boy with the, with the consent and, and um, acceptance of his parents down to South Africa. And he worked there as a priest. And he worked down there, he was accepted in with the Zulu family, the Zulu people. And he worked with them for 20 years. And through his work and, and adapting into the culture down there, he um, started to understand the reverence for ancestral healing and how we were all connected. And I just recently learned that to say hello in Zulu means we see you. Uh -huh. which is so beautiful because if you ever experience the constellation that's one of the f one of the most important and valuable things that we can say is actually seeing somebody from the whole self of who we are to the whole person that they are and so after he returned back to germany he delved more into eastern philosophy and western psychotherapy studied somatic healing mm. and founded this this constellation process now is this yeah. right after World War II or around yeah, that time? Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. So he's still alive, isn't he? He is. He's. I think it'll be 93 this month. <laughs> yeah, yes, it's pretty fast. So, so uh, 
What is the, tell us about the format of the, what the constellation looks like, what it is when you, when you get in there, because that's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's really interesting. So um, when you work in a circle, um, you will have a seeker, so somebody who starts, um, that is interested in resolving an issue. So it could be, um, it could be as small as, like I said, uh, a part of yourself. You want to work with a fear that you have, or it could be globally. It could be, a, you know, a larger sphere of, of systemic or um, uh, working through generational issues. And um, so the seeker will have their issue, and I will facilitate the people in the circle to represent members of that person's family or of whatever the issue is that we're working on to come to a resolution. And this work is also done one-on-one -on -one as well, and you have uh, different types of representation instead of the people that are in the circle. But the benefit of doing this work in a group setting is that the people that are witnessing and part of the circle also receive healing for their own systems because we are all connected. Yes. So we all receive, and then the people that are representing in the circle, they also receive benefit of healing for their own systems as well. So it's quite a beautiful collective work. I, I've experienced that. I've been in a circle mm -hmm. where I, the, it was all about me, but I've also been in one where I was somebody's father mm -hmm. or I was somebody's brother and, or somebody's son. And it was very interesting how much I was drawn into, the, into that role and mm -hmm. how I, I really felt, I did feel that connection with the, the, the other people. And mm -hmm. that, was, that was sort of shocking yeah. to me uh, almost that, that it was palpable. <laughs> yeah. So we're working in uh, what Bert coins as the knowing field, and it's... The knowing field? The knowing field. Okay. The field of, it's like the morphogenic field, the conscious field. And so when you step in with the right intention and the right, um, so, yeah, the right intention that's set for the group, you step in as somebody's grandfather, or you don't even know what you're stepping in as, because mm. I like to do them blind, so no one knows what they're doing and it becomes more authentic, more natural, so they get out of their head and they're really in the somatic part. And suddenly that person is having a, a sensation or a movement or wants to turn a feeling of maybe love or anger towards somebody else in the circle, and that's not theirs, it's the person they're representing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think one of the most interesting things for me is that how this plays into our, uh, our new consciousness that we are all connected. I mean, mm -hmm. we think of quantum consciousness, finding that we are instantaneously connected with all parts of the universe mm -hmm. at once. And I mean, this is something that we think of as new, but in fact, it's not. It's, it's a patrimony that the human race has lost. I think we used, to, we used to do these things and we've sort of gotten away from it, but now we're getting back into it. Yeah, and so. I think, um, you know, our Western culture, we generally don't honor the ancestors. Right. But with new science like epigenetics t telling us that the traumas that exist in our family system, the, the traumas that have been there for generations are still carried in our DNA. Right. Until we can remove that trauma and understand it from a perspective of love and light. Let's take an example of anger. Anger maybe is looked in our in our society as something wrong, something that's an, you know, maybe that's not a great emotion to have. But if you look at the origin of it for some systems, I've already seen it where that anger served for survival. Mm -hmm. So that anger continues to flow into the system, but may not be recognized as a gift that that family has because of its origin of survival. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. <laughs> so um, as far as the, the nuts and bolts of it, uh, how long does it take? Just the you come in the morning, or in, and uh, it lasts a morning, or how long does it last? To um, well, the process. If if you're one on one, I mean, usually an hour to work on a constellation, but you can't limit it either. So if there's a group process, a circle, usually I facilitate three three hour circles generally once uh -huh. a month. Um, I've done day long ones as well. Uh, it just depends on the facilitator and the numbers, I think, as well, in the circle. Okay. Yeah. And uh, do you have anything that, uh, 
that is in, in particular about uh, the way that you're doing it with the one? I've never participated in a one-on-one -on -one constellation. Can you talk about that or address yeah, that a little bit? Yeah, for sure. There's different ways of doing the one-on-one. -on -one. You can do, um, I have clients that are distant, so that don't necessarily live local or can't actually come to me in person. Mm -hmm. And so um, we can do constellations through visualization process. Um, if I work with children as well, and I use little Playmobil uh, to represent, oh, and they I get see. to pick, you know, we can work on conflicts with their friends or conflicts with family or even situational things. Um, you can use objects in nature. I've done nature constellations where we've picked up rocks and we've moved them around and, and uh, any, anything that is, you know, a representation of those people or those situations. Yeah. Okay, and uh, do you find that people, it takes, either people get this or they don't and some people don't want to do it or do you find that pretty much everybody gets into it if they come to, to do it in the first yeah, place? Yeah, generally people, if it's their first time, they sort of just sit and observe, but it depends on the individual. Um, most people are kind of blown away by the end of the process because uh -huh. it's, it's nothing they've ever experienced before. Unless they've done maybe a lot of different modalities, then um, they might have seen it in a different form because there's, there's different types of psychotherapies that work with sculpting and um, gestalt therapies and things like that. I right. don't know a whole lot about those, but um, there is some, some parallels in, in different types of counseling and things like that. Well, Bert Hellinger, was a, he was a psychotherapist and he was also a Jesuit, wasn't he? So he had... I think he was a, a priest. He was a he priest, was a Catholic yeah. Catholic priest. Yeah. So, so it kind of it's a mix of different traditions. I mean, you have the the scientific, the modern scientific yeah. tradition, and you have the old Zulu shamanic tradition. Mm -hmm. But then you also have it's mixed in sort of with our. I mean, there are references to our sort of Western spirituality, our Judeo-Christian culture, right? Yes, he, definitely. Bert Hellinger really did a. Uh, he had to work on this to make it fit with our culture, right? Yeah, I think it was really difficult for him um, initially uh, stepping out with this in in mm -hmm. um, in the format that it, but he continued to persevere and um, and it, it is so well known, especially in Europe. Um, this is the constellation, constellation therapy. It's big in Europe. Huge in Europe. Huge in Mexico. Um, um, it's growing quite a bit in, in the United States and and Canada as well. So, I think with you know, with more awareness around, there's more of a desire as well to find out about your ancestry with right. websites like Ancestry.ca and people are starting to delve into that, which is creating more of a, an awareness of where we're from and also maybe a change in perspective, um, which helps with understanding and that resolution. Right. Unless you're standing in the energy of your grandparents and what the traumas that they've lived, you might not be able to understand that perspective. I have to say that, that when I fir did yeah. my first uh, constellation, I was very skeptical. I was mm -hmm. sitting there like this, but uh, by the time, even that first one, by the time I was out of it, I really learned that this is, uh, this is something that is very useful. It's mm -hmm. If you've been through any kind of therapy that hasn't been successful, trying this can really help. I, because it gives you, a, it's not all about you. It, it brings in other, mm -hmm. so many other factors in a way that's not the same, <laughs> it mm -hmm. just—it really is different. So I, I'd have to say that uh, I thought that it, it's something that people who are frustrated with where they are mm -hmm. would could really benefit from trying this because it can give you a totally different. It can snap you into a different place very quickly. Yes, definitely. And it's you. We live our lives based on our perspective of where we're at and what we see. But when you witness it from a different angle, your, your paradigm shifts, your, your eyes open up and you're like, oh, I didn't realize that my mother had such challenges when she was a child. I have so much compassion for her now because you might not have seen it until you see it in this sort of format or what lies behind somebody, you know? Yeah. Well, thank you very much. We're out of time, Rochelle, but right. that was really fascinating, and I, I thank you so much for coming on to the show and telling us about this. And thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.